Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 10th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover a spinning collectible coin. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now. On with the tutorial. So almost every Endless Runner game that we encounter will have some kind of collectible, probably a currency of some kind. In our case we're going to have two types of currency, we're going to have some coins and we're going to have some gems. If you've played Timmy and Mousy, which is linked in the very first tutorial of this series, you'll know exactly what I mean. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a coin in this start segment for us to eventually collect. Uh, we'll start by making it very simple and then we'll add in some texture to it to make it look a bit more like a gold shiny coin. So for now let's create the basic coin shape. Let's go to game object, 3D object and cylinder. And we can manipulate the shape and size of this cylinder to make it look more like a coin. First let's rename this simply coin. And now let us rotate on the X to 90. And we can change the scale right here. So I'm going to have 0 0.4. Maybe that's too thick for a coin. 0 0.04. There we go. That's a little bit better. And I'm going to change the scale, I think. Um, in fact, let's see how big this coin actually looks uh, relevant to Timmy. So if Timmy looks you know, really small compared to the coin, then we will change how it looks. But again, as I always say with these sort of things, it is your game. You're the one that changes things. You're the one that makes it how you want it to be. Uh, so let's let Timmy run past the coin. And it does look a bit too big for Timmy. So I will reduce the size to 0 0.6, 0 0.6 maybe. That looks okay. So what we'll do now is we'll make this coin rotate. And it is a really, really simple script. But what we are going to do is we're going to add a variable to that script so as we're able to control the speed. The reason is because we can then reuse that script for our other collectible, which will be a gem. So let's go to our scripts folder, right click, create, and let's go and create a script. And we'll call this collectible rotate. I'm going to take the space out of that. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. We don't need the start method and we don't need the annotations, so we can comfortably delete those. What we do need is a variable. So this variable, like I say, is going to control our speed and it can be an integer, it can be a float depending on what you want. But I'm just going to use an integer for simplicity. So we want to have serialize field and the type is going to be int for integer and we'll call it rotate speed and I am going to make it equal to one at least just for now. So the reason we're making it equal to something now is because by default it will be zero which means it will not rotate. You could have this as two, three, four, five, whatever, depending on how fast you want it to rotate. But I will show you how that looks a little later on in this video. So in the update method, we now need to write a little bit of code which allows us to rotate that coin at whatever speed we've defined with our variable. We need to transform it. So transform dot rotate and then open brackets. We now need to declare the X, Y, and Z. We don't want it to rotate on the X or the Z because we want it to rotate as you would normally see. But again, if you want to do that and rotate on the X or the Y, uh, the, y the Z altogether, it's entirely up to you. So I'm not rotating on the X, so I'm gonna put zero. I am rotating on the Y and I want it to rotate by whatever we specified in our variable. So rotate speed and I don't want to rotate it on the Z, so comma. We now need to make it relative to the world around it. So we need to say space dot world, close bracket, 
semicolon, and save. So what this script will do is simply just rotate whatever object it's attached to. So if we were to attach this to Timmy, Timmy would rotate. If we were to attach this to the world, the world would rotate. And obviously, we're only going to attach this to our coin. So head back into Unity, and then drag and drop collectible rotate onto our coin. And if we click it and go down, you can see that's where the rotate speed is set as one. So if we press play now and have Timmy run towards the coin, we'll be able to see this spin, no problem at all. I can already see it spinning right there. That looks pretty good. So just to illustrate how the speed will affect it, if we hold control, press D to duplicate the coin, bring it to the side, and let's change the speed of this coin to three. Press play again, and we'll see the coin on the right spinning three times as fast as our original coin. Right there. Excellent. So we can see that that does indeed work. So now let's make our coin look more like a coin. So I'm going to get rid of the duplicate one. And I'm going to create a new folder down here called textures. And I'm going to import an image that we can attach to this coin. So I'm going to drag and drop, if I go into the right place, this gold coin right here. And you can get this gold coin if you go to the pinned comment. You can find a link where you can get the script that we wrote and this coin, download it for free. And that link is also in the description. So let's drag and drop this gold coin onto the coin itself. So drag and drop over here. And it looks a bit more like some kind of collectible coin, but there's more that we can do to it to make it look a little better. Should really put that gold coin in textures. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? So now what I'm going to do is that texture, I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate. And I'm going to rename it instead of gold coin one, gold coin underscore N. We're going to create something called a normal map. This normal map will make the coin look a little bit more 3D and make it a bit shiny, a bit more goldy looking. So over here with that selected, we can change the texture type to normal map. And then we can click on create from grayscale and then click on apply. The next thing to do is go to our coin here, scroll down to where you have your material component, click the arrow to expand it, and then drag and drop this normal map onto this bit right here. And you can see it's made a bit of a difference, but what I want to do is I want to change the color now to a nice yellow color to make it look a bit more goldy and shiny. And we can also change the metallic look of it, change the smoothness if you want to. And I think it looks fairly decent now. It looks more like a coin. So let's press play and have a quick look at what this actually looks like in game. Again, you don't necessarily have to do this. You don't even have to use the texture if you don't want to. I just feel it gives it a little bit of something. There we go. That looks cool enough. So what we're going to do next tutorial is we are going to continue with this coin. Because this coin as it stands doesn't do a whole lot. It just spins and does nothing and we can run straight through it. So we want to be able to run at the coin and we want it to make uh, maybe some kind of dinging sound or something like that. So we're going to add in some sound effects, some collision detection for that coin. And I think we'll add in some background music as well, because at this point our game is looking more like a game. We need to have something in it that feels like a game. So background music will certainly help with that. And as I've said before, if you want to get any of these uh, textures or scripts, head to the pinned comment down below or in the description, and you can go ahead and download them for free. So remember to subscribe and click on that notification bell and you can stay up to date with every tutorial I upload in this series because there is still a lot to come in this series and there is a lot to learn. It's going to be a fantastic game. And if you've not played Timmy and Mousy at this point already, linked in the first tutorial, I would implore you to go back to that tutorial, go to the pinned comment, download Timmy and Mousy, play it just so you can see where we are going with this series, because it is going to look absolutely epic. And I will see you in the next tutorial.